Welcome back to the channel, everybody. I'm Dakota with Dakota Woods Outfitter. And today we're going to be talking a little bit about a revamp of a video that was done a while back. If you haven't already seen it, go check that video out. I'll leave a link to it down here in the description box. But I don't think people understood the point of that video and why my fire kit was so big at the time and why it still is quite big today. And that's what we're going to be talking about. As you can see right here at the water's edge. Maybe you're coming up here to grab filter or water for the grill. Maybe you're coming to wash your hands off or just dip in the creek. Just get something on your face, which, by the way, is very dangerous. Um, depending on the creek that you choose to dip in, right? My point is, <clears throat> as outdoorsmen and as mammals, as creatures in general, when you're in the woods, your life revolves around water. I don't care where the food is, you can go for a while with that, but you're going to find yourself like every other animal, which is why trappers use the water's edge to get water. You have to go to the water's edge to get water. And at some point, you're going to take a fall. It may only be once in your career as an outdoorsman or woman. That's fine. That's perfect. Zero is better. I've fallen plenty of times. I've capsized canoes plenty of times. And my point is, in this video today, we're going to be talking about why it's important for you to have a good fire kit and what I recommend that you carry in order to supplement yourself and survivability. <clears throat> I want to go ahead and offer you a fallacy today that um, I have unfortunately lost a friend to. I'm going to say it that way. And I don't mean like we're no longer friends. I mean like, She's no longer alive. She passed away um, in this particular instance. And not being funny, but Sarah was one of those people we didn't expect to ever have an issue in the woods. She'd went out and she had some fireproof, or sorry, waterproof storm matches. And she had took those inside of her pocket kit on an ultralight kind of minimalist canoe trip. She capsized her canoe and was submerged for about 15 minutes. She got drugged down the river. Her pack, which was at the front of her canoe, was lost as, long, as well as her canoe was. And she was left with nothing but matches in her little match case. And the very small amount of tender she had packed inside of there. Now, mind you, it was the dead of winter. And... Unfortunately, that combined with her inability to get a wet, a wet weather fire, a wet conditions fire, if you will, going, uh, ultimately cost her her life. Now, everybody used to pick on Sarah because Dakota of the Woods, when we were all working together as guides, carried his a haversack. This is the one that I carry now. Ever since I've known Blackie, I've had this haversack. But I've had haversacks like this before in terms of bread bags, things of that nature. and they always stay around my, my shoulder. I don't care if I'm canoeing or not. Um, I find a way to tether them to me so that everything inside that bag is with me when I capsize. There's no excuse other than it opening up and all the contents falling out. If you get a good haversack, you don't have that problem. <clears throat> now, that to be said, Sarah's gone, and I don't want you to be gone. I don't want the community to lose another member of the family and yes this was a few years ago that this has happened but today is the anniversary of sarah's passing or at least what we could what around the few day mark in between there when the cat when the guys that had done her autopsy said this is roughly around the time and so uh this was the day after she had left off on her own little canoe trip <clears throat> in which they assume is the day that this happened um, to the best of their knowledge. Now, I wasn't there. Nobody was there. Um, which is oddly the case for most of us. Whenever we have our worst days in the woods, I guarantee you, you're by yourself. And so I want you to let that sink in for yourself. One day, that worst day will be the literal worst day of your life because it'll also be the last. And so I want you to consider that. Before we hop into this, thank you for listening to that tiny little story. But today, I'm going to go ahead and talk to you all about something that 
was created because of situations like that. I don't know if any of you guys know Dan Lutz, but uh, this was inspired by him and created by Randy from Stitch Gear. And um, good friend of mine, by the way. And we'll be offering these on the channel if you find this to be something you want in your kit after this video. He also sells them on his website. I'll leave that down there in the description box as well. But I'm not here to sell you stuff today, guys. And if I am here to sell you anything, it's going to be your life. Because um, you're playing with it when you don't carry kits that are adequate for real outdoor travel. And let's go ahead and hop into this. And we're going to show you what I carry, why I carry. It's going to be a long video today, but hopefully it'll save your life. And inevitably, if you deploy these things properly and use your own brain cells and understand your own environment when you deploy them, inevitably it'll stop you from being in a bad situation in the first place. All right, let's hop into this. All right, guys, I've moved us over here to my fire building space. For those of you who haven't seen it before, I... um. I train a lot, and, and this place right here has a lot of trees that drop a lot of stuff, so what I do is I just collect it all up, and I just have it in piles laying around here. I have actually need to clean it up. I haven't used it in about two or three weeks, and um, two or three weeks we've had storms, and so it's pretty nasty now. I need to go ahead and get it unnastified, if you will. Now, <clears throat> that to be said, my fire kit mirrors where I go normally, okay? This is like 10% of my time. This is right after work. I have, like like today, right after work, I have a little bit of time. Let me run out here and get a little bit farther from from, uh, from my backyard, if you will. And then on the weekends is when I go deeper into the woods, right? When I have the time to actually facilitate that. That to be said, um, this is going to facilitate those things, okay? But you need to have things that facilitate you across the board. So we're going to talk a little bit about that. For starters, the big two, okay? I always have a ferrous serum rod with a really good striker and a Bic lighter inside of an Exotech sleeve, okay? I want to talk to you guys a little bit about this trio. This ferro striker has got enough space on it to actually shave down wood, so you don't need to have one of those knives that have a, 90, a good 90-degree spine. You can save money there if that's something that Maybe like for me, I love a Kephart knife, like the true design Kephart knife. And so I love this thing because it's with the thing that I'm making fire with. It'll never be anywhere else. A good mild striker, or sorry, for a serum rod is going to do you a good job. And I like to use the half inch rods. Um, I have no quarrels with any other size. This is just the most convenient for me. They I burn through about two of these a year, maybe three. I burn about four or five of the smaller rods off. And I've actually never owned a one-inch rod for more than a year at a time before I traded it off for another one of these half-inch rods. So, fair serum rod, get yourself a mild one. You don't want one that's too hard or it's not going to strike very well. And you need a really good striker. A lot of the times you can take a poor fair serum rod and get a good striker, and that will solve your problem. You'll throw much better sparks, and it'll actually make that cheap decision a little more lucrative for you in the woods, right? Again, you want a Exotac sleeve if you can get one or something that's similar to it. And um, be honest with y'all, I prefer these white um, Bic lighters here because you can actually see the fluid. I don't know if you guys can see the fluid. Let's see, maybe it'll let you see it. But you can tell where your fluid is in this lighter. I don't know if y'all can see that on here or not. Um, I can see it quite well. I've got three quarters of a tank, if you will. And one other thing that I do to my big lighters is I like to take this little safety guard off because I can run this up my hand, as you can see, and produce flame. That means I can run it up anywhere. I could even stuff it across the ground if I have one hurt hand and I really need to just stuff this into the fire and go like this. I can just run it into the fire. And yes, that's hurting my hand, so I'm not going to keep doing it. But I can just run it over a stick right into the fire, right into my tender bundle, if you will, and uh, still use this big lighter. Having an Exotac sleeve is not a necessity, but it really will save your butt when you really need this. Because nine times out of ten, when you fall into a creek or a river or you need to just get to something, it's a lot easier to just flick this thing. Boom. Nobody's watching. Nobody cares. Get the thing lit. Still practice with these. I light most of my fires with a ferro serum rod. Why do I like that? Why do I light most of them with a ferro rod? Well... 
It costs a lot less money per strike, and this lasts a lot longer than this does, especially when you get good with these. But this right here, this little holy trinity, if you will, the fire, the ferro rod, the good striker, and the big lighter, I keep them in a way that I can put them around my neck if for whatever reason I need to, or I can tether them to anything so they can never get lost. And they're also always together, right? These can also fold away neatly into pretty much any pocket so that you can slide these into any pocket. It becomes very useful, right? You can also put them into this bag here, which is the next section we're going to talk about. And I'm going to drop these down here behind us because we're getting ready to go down there and make a fire. And the next thing I wanted to talk to you all about is what I could consider, if you carry that first section, to be one of the most important parts of the kit in terms of day-to-day -day usefulness, right? How many of us believe in the possum mentality of grabbing things as you go, the possum pouch mentality? You grabbing it, you grabbing it, you grabbing it, and you're just stuffing it in there. Maybe you find a wild edible. Maybe you find something to light a fire with. Well, for me, I believe in carrying enough coals in your pocket to be lucrative. What do I mean by that? These particular sticks I picked up last summer, a few of them are cedar. One of them is just a big fluffy oak piece so that I can have some really good coals. But as you can see, I've got a little handful of various sized sticks, all the way from kindling, um, shavable tender, and all the way up to fuel, right? Stage one fuel. And the reason why that is is because I can make an on-the-go fire, a lunch fire, if you will. And if there's ever a rainy condition in which you just have nothing to work with, but you still have a ferro rod, you still have this mess, this uh, fire kit we're getting ready to talk about, you have the ability off rip to be able to actually put it onto some dry stuff, which will save you a lot. Now, obviously, if you take a dunk in the river or something like that, you lose this ability. But this is nice to have every day of the year. And it's something that I carry not only for those fire purposes, but maybe I want to step away from camp. Maybe I'm at a class and I want to just go ahead and throw my water bottle in here and walk down to the class. Maybe I'm at a big gathering and I want to go out and uh, try out some new fire methods that I just learned at a, at a booth. You know, go ahead and use that kind of stuff. It's really, really important for you to be able to do that. Sorry for keeping y'all keeping my head out of here, but I want y'all to focus on that. Lastly, with that particular piece right there, when it does start raining, and because this is folded up, I'm getting ready to take it off here, boom, which is another thing. I always recommend you get one with buttons on the back because you can slide this over and this stiff leather is going to hold on. But when you button it down, it won't let it come off. But if you ever need to take it off, instead of having to take your whole belt off, you just unbutton this, pick it up. I've put 20 pounds in this, or, the, or not 20 pounds, sorry, 10 pounds worth of sand and uh, not sand, excuse me, the little sand dumbbells. I don't know if you guys have ever seen those, but they're full of sand. Um, they're little 10 pound little weights. And I put that in here and just walked around the house with it for 30 minutes, just back and forth, back and forth. This thing didn't move a bit. Like you, you can really get these pretty cheap on Amazon. I don't remember what brand this is. If I can find it, I'll show you. But it's a wax duck canvas bag. I think this is 1010, non-army duct, just duck canvas. And uh, it's holding up very well. This is my third year owning it. And uh, it's getting a little dirty, but uh, that's what happens when you use it every day. Now, here's the meat and potatoes, y'all. This is what happens when you spend 15 years in the woods and you train on fire more than you drink water, which is actually not an untrue statement, which is creepy because I probably should drink more water. Long story short, this right here is something you can operate when you're very, very cold, when you have, when you're, when you're stressing out, I don't know if you guys have ever tried to grab at zippers and stuff like that when you're stressed out, but this guy right here is going to hold tight when you put it together and you're sane because you should have this pre-built. Sorry about that, but you should also understand that it should be able to come off quite easily. All I've got to do is, oh my gosh, I'm freaking out. I've just pulled it off, right? It's all right there. It's out of the way. Okay. And if you're worried about it, if you're worried about it, you have this much. Tether it to your body if you're really worried about it, right? Um, so that you can't lose it. Okay. Now I like to leave it, I just like to leave it dangling, like so. And this is the Dan Lutz inspired piece right here. This particular wax bag is uh, a leather, a wax leather and uh, chromium tanned. Really good piece of kit. Okay. Now what happens is you've got this overflap that wraps over and then creates pressure 
and it very much so does waterproof this. Now, waterproofing and submersion are different, okay? I would call this weatherproof. There is no amount of weather that is going to penetrate this bag. And if you take a dunk into water with this inside of another bag, you have about five to 10 minutes, I'd say. Probably, I would say more like three to five, but I've seen this thing go for 10 minutes and it still be usable. 10 minutes submerged is a long time, especially when you're not, do, you're not doodle bopping around in the woods just, or water to be funny. You're going across right now, there's a problem and you're trying to get out. It'll take you about two to three minutes to do so on a bad day. And um, you'll have the opportunity to have dry tender, okay? Again, this is also very much so weatherproof and floatable as long as you don't submerge it for 10 minutes and then hold it. I'm not saying it's it's submersible, it's just waterproof. I want to very, 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 very deeply state that. Okay? When you pull this tender bag open, first thing that I carry are these handmade pucks. Now, I don't have the money to buy pucks. And even if I did, these work better, like significantly better. They look ugly, and so they're not very sellable. But um, you can chunk them up like this. That right there is a good bit of a fire. In fact, we're going to use it here in a minute. But you can fit about four or five pucks in these. And what this little canister is, is just one of those little uh, paper clip holders from the dollar store. They fit the, they fit the little makeup pucks perfectly. If you are interested in learning how to make one of these on your own, please tell me in the comment section below. And while you're down there, go ahead and hit the like and subscribe button. All right? Good piece of kit. This will save you from a lot. Almost died. <clears throat> These guys are awesome. These are just fire pucks that I created at the house. There are plenty of fire pucks on the market. Get yourself some or make your own. I personally have found that the handmade pucks work better. If you're interested in this whole kit and how to create it yourself at home from canister to puck, let me know in the comment section. I'll show you. Now, the next thing that comes out of here for me, and this is a mandatory one, is another big Whiter. Now, this one right here is more of a convenience big Whiter. And because it's in a waterproof bag and the fallacy that these things just don't work in water is BS. Um, I, I've actually submerged these plenty of times and still used them. Um, now, you can't just leave it out in the weather for 17 days and it'd be raining all 17 days and it worked. But we'll show you guys that in another video as well. I carry a green big lighter in there. I haven't yet taken this one off because I've had this thing for years and it's just my spare big lighter. It's never failed me. Um, this year at the end of the season, it will actually be getting replaced and taken into the house for like a craft thing. But what I've done here, if you can't tell, is I've got a half inch and a one inch strip of tape on here. The reason why I've done that is you can do so much with this duct tape for fire lighting, and it also is an adhesive at the end of the day. This big lighter right here itself will help you in a lot of situations. I'll go ahead and set him down there as well. So you've already seen some redundancy in the kit. You've already seen one completely waterproof big lighter. And if for some reason you lose that kit, maybe you're stressing out and you use your big three and you just forget it somewhere but your tinder bag is in your bag somewhere you still have a lighter it's okay and you still have everything you're going to need to light fires it's okay you've got a source right there that we just looked at that will produce a flame so if you lose the other stuff you're okay all right it gives you an opportunity to be a human being and fail now the next thing that comes out of here and this is something that you in most cases in the United States can produce for yourself. And that's fat wood. Now, if you go out and find your own fat wood, I'm telling you right now, I don't know if you can see all that nice stuff in there. That really, that really red looking. Yeah, that stuff's awesome. The stuff you buy online physically lights. The stuff you find in the woods is pretty intense. In fact, when I build my fire kits, the good stuff I sell, but the absolute gold I keep for myself. Why? Because I'm in the outdoors just like you, and I took the time to go find the absolute gold. What I'm saying is go out there and find yourself some absolute gold. And if you, for whatever reason you can't or don't know how, again, leave me a comment down there. Let me know you want to learn 
how to find fatwood and I'll take you with me on a fatwood hunt and show you where the good stuff is. All right. But guys, get some fatwood in there. I don't like anything thinner than my thumb. I can shave these in half. I can split these down and make a lot of fires out of them. I can even build a whole log cabin out of these two right here. And if for whatever reason, again, you can split these down and make a whole lot of fires. I mean, there's a good 20 fires per stick right here, in my opinion, if you shave it down right uh, and know what you're doing. You shave this thing long ways or you just split it down long ways and split them in half. Yeah, there's a lot of fires here. And at the end of the day, these do make decent little coals if you're just having an issue getting some coals. The next thing I carry in here is a candle. And as you can probably see, it's been well used. It started out brand new and now it's not. Uh, I'll show you the reason why these candles are super important. Stay tuned for the end of the video where we make a fire with this kit. And I'll show you something pretty cool about it. Um, this right here is going to extend your sure flame. What I mean by that is you've got a limited amount of fuel in there. You've got a limited candle. But this candle can't light itself. That lighter can. You can light this candle and extend your flame without burning off a guaranteed source of flame, right? You can also keep this on standby until your fire is actually burning in case your tender burns out and you have to go again instead of sitting there burning off again more fuel. You had this thing sitting on standby already and it's already got a flame on it and they burn for about six to eight hours a piece. So if it takes you six to eight hours to make one uh, fire with this entire kit, that's dangerous. You need to get some training. No offense, but that's that that'll end up killing you in the long run. To be honest with you. Now, the last man-made thing in this kit, and these are things that I use quite often because they're just easy, and I don't I love I love having them, and they make good coals. Is these weird little like sticks? They're like waxed uh, wood shavings, if you will, compressed wood shaving blocks. You can chunk a little piece of this off, turn it into a fat wood brick, if you will. And uh, I'll show you guys how these work here in this video specifically. But I love these things. You can buy like a 20 pack for $2 at Walmart. And uh, you can turn these things into squares about the tip of your finger size and just keep going. There's a good 8 to 10 fires right there guaranteed. Um, so you've already covered about 25 to 30 fires already, right? And the last thing that I carry in here, and arguably the most important considering what you normally carry up top, is a true tender bundle. And what I mean by that is I've got a tender bundle in here that does multiple things, okay? You've got little shards of stick, little shavings, if you will, that will actually make their own coals once they light a flame, which means if for whatever reason you lose the coal that you create, it's okay. And this tender bundle is very, very finely grown up. I'll show you guys how to make one of these here soon. But I've got a lot of cedar in here because cedar, again, kind of turns into more of a coal when it burns as opposed to a flash tender like the rest of the stuff in here. And the last thing I've got that's in conjunction with this is a piece of coal. Why do I have a, a coal from a fire? Well, these coals, this dead coal right here, I don't know if you guys have ever used a magnifying glass to start a fire and had issues doing it. But when you catch this thing with that magnifying glass and you get that ember burning, it's literally sitting on an active coal. So you can literally use this as maybe like a fungus. Like there's a lot of fungi that will collect and burn very small, slowly, like smolder, if you will. This guy will do the same. In fact, you can powder this stuff uh, quite easily by just crushing it in your hand. And you have it there. This also acts as a medicine. Well, if you ever get your stomach getting hurting because of something you ate in the woods, eat some of this stuff. You've got it in your bag. It's going to suck, but it's going to absorb whatever you swallowed and it's going to make you throw up and then you're going to feel better. And it's going to come out with this as opposed to, uh, well, it might not even make you throw up in most cases, but my point stands, uh, this rakes for a really good thing. And again, it is an active coal. So if you just can't get coals, you have one and you can build off one, right? But you always want to carry one solid tender bundle. And this to me is really two because I like little dinky tender bundles. I use them more as a flash tender because they do light up quite quickly. But if you make them right, they burn longer, smaller. And that allows you to carry more in a small space, if you will. You still got the same volume, but you've got more uses. We'll talk about a really solid way to create these here in a later video. Let's hop down here. And I'm going to show you one of my favorite ways to light a fire in the woods using the stuff that we have in this kit. All right, folks, so as you can see, right here, 
we're going to talk a little bit about what we got in our kit. Now, obviously, we have everything that we typically carry to include our extra fuel sources, right? And I mean that by fuel that the fire will burn, not fuel sources to ignite it, right? So these are ignition sources. These are fuel sources. You could actually consider these fuel sources because they do burn and you can burn them for a while. Whereas this and everything on this end right here is more of an ignition source. So from here over, top half, fuel sources. Some of them have a transfer where they can be one or the other or both if necessary. In most cases for me, both. And then you've got your ignition sources right here, right? You also need a standing amount of fuel and stuff like that for your fire. So what I'm going to recommend to you is this. Coals are naturally going to be affected by gravity just like every other thing on this planet, which means they're going to want to go down to the ground, right? So I take everything that I want to turn into a coal and I set it right across here, all right? This is a no frills, no uh, large scale factory farming fire. This is a fire that works for people that are really out here doing this stuff and they can't afford to waste time building two or three, okay? Everything right here is extremely dry and it's going to fall. It's going to have coals fall all over it, okay? Now, I also like to make the bottom two rings or the bottom ring of my log cabin fire out of the material that I make this stuff out of, okay? So as you can see, my bottom ring is there. Now, we don't have enough in this particular instance for a full ring, and that's fine. Um, you just want at least one side to be able to burn because fire likes to climb, which is why I love the log cabin fire. I also like to do like a log cabin pyramid style so that way when that flame comes up, it's actually getting exposed. It's exposing everything and that center point of heat is right over top of it, creating more coals. Coals are what will sustain a fire. Flame just exists because of coals, right? So then we're going to put our fire lay down. What I'd like to do next is we built our little base. And what we're going to do is we're going to take this really skinny material here. And we're going to build a little lean-to fire, like so. Just little coals that, like this, are going to start these bigger coals at the bottom, right? So we've got that. Great. Now... We can start building up and making it smaller, smaller at the top. So you just keep going up until you get to a point where you have this looking thing, right? You've got more of like a, a pyramid being built. And this is the point. And by the way, you want to leave a little square right here. Um, something that I failed to mention earlier, and I'm sorry about that. I just got ahead of myself. A good knife is really good to have in a fire kit, but that's a part of other kits as well. You can dedicate a knife to this. In some cases, I do typically consider my mora. It's normally in here, but today it's not. Um, I like to go ahead and make little, each corner gets feathered out like so. And I'm going to make this one rather large because I want you all to be able to see what I'm talking about. It has nothing to do with me needing this much. You can use about half of this uh, stick that we're using right now, but we're going to use the whole thing just to show you. And I built one side a little too too poor, and I did one side a little too thick, and one side a little too uh, deep, right? So as you can see right here, the side that you're looking at right now, see that? The perfect side is right here with these, with these really loose leaflets. The next best one on here is these really deep leaflets, and the other two aren't going to do too well. I wanted to show you that. And what we're going to do is we're going to set this guy in here like so. So that we can get at them in a minute. All right. You want to make sure that you can get to your little feathers inside of here. Now, I want to show you this candle method. Go ahead and light your candle. Okay. Get your candle burning first. Don't just go right to this. Let the candle burn. Go ahead and get your candle set up so that you can actually have it standing up straight. You see that right there? Good. That's where your candle is going to stay at all times. If you're right-handed, put it on the left side. I'm left-handed. I want my, my strong hand to be able to access my knife and whatever I want. I want this to be able to access this. As you can see, it took me just a few seconds to light this, but I still have a sure flame sitting here. You can now take this sure flame and light your other materials without burning off the fire or, sorry, the fuel 
inside of your main ignition source. This guy's going to take off and start burning. You can go ahead and start throwing stuff on top of him, and he's going to produce a pretty good coal. These little sticks right here are going to produce a fairly great coal, okay? Now, the only negative to these is that they're very hard to reproduce in the field. And as you can see, I still got my candle on standby. So if all this fails, which I might intentionally do to show you how to do the natural tender way, we'll still have an opportunity to succeed without having to light our big lighter again, which means we have more fires in here inevitably, right? These right here are easy to replace. You're starting to see that smoke coming out of these guys. All the stuff that we're creating right now, all these coals are going to start falling down. They're going to start falling down to that really punky stuff at the bottom and creating real coals, a bed of them, so that our next fire, which is the next step up, if you haven't seen my classes, the next step up in the step up method is actually building a fire that's useful to you. And fire does love chaos, y'all. Don't try and, uh, once you make your little square bottom, go crazy with it at the top. Go ham with it, you know what I mean? Um, don't be afraid to just do stupid stuff at that point because fire loves chaos and fire loves to climb. As you can see right here, I do have a good flame, but I'm telling you right now that I cannot walk away from this. This is not a fire, okay? A fire is something that is sustained enough to where you can walk away, go get water, maybe even go get some food, come back to it, and just throw some wood on it and it'll be back to normal, right? This stuff right here, while burning very well, again, is going to need a lot of attention. So it's no, to me, this is not a sustained fire. This is step one, and it's the most crucial part, because if you burn this out, you're in big trouble, right? Now, why you have coals of that, or a flame of that size, this is where the fun begins. As a matter of fact, we'll use the fuel uh, inside the bag at a later time, because I want y'all to see something quite interesting. We've got enough flame here that I'm going to go ahead and put my candle out. That's, uh, that's sustainable enough to me. There's no reason to have any more. So that guy right there. But there you go, guys. That fire's burning pretty good, right? I'm going to let it burn out here in a second if I don't start doing things. And the next step of a really good fire, hopefully this thing burns out while I'm walked away. I want that to happen, but I suck it. I suck so bad at sucking at fire that it probably won't, which is fine. It's actually a blessing. I'm talking about it like it's a curse. Um, that's okay, Dakota. Some people don't know what they got. All right, now, in this phase, we can start making our actual fire. This is the thing we can walk away from, right? That coal bed's down there. Maybe these pieces of stick right here, they're about as thick as your thumb, no thicker than your thumb. Maybe they're wet. Maybe they're damp. Maybe it's just a really humid day and things are having trouble burning, right? That coal bed right there is a really good opportunity to start drying stuff out and start getting real coals to be made. Because those are what I call flash coals. They're such skinny things that they burn for a little bit, but they don't burn. They're there for a good time, not a long time, if you will, for those of you younger guys out there who know what that joke is. But you need a fire to be there for a long time, right? I'm starting to build a lean-to fire. Why? Again, see that right there? Fire loves to climb. It's going to the highest point. You notice how everything down here is not burning, but everything at this higher point is starting to catch on fire? Give your fire something to climb and stop using the whole, like, oh, I'm only using a log cabin method or whatever. Let this stuff burn and let it do it naturally. Stop trying to control it like it's a square block. Nothing in nature has symmetry for a reason. So stop trying to use symmetry. It doesn't help very much. The chaos, if you will, is what helps it. See, this right here is a small sustained fire. At this point, we've got good-sized logs burning. I say logs, but you know I consider those logs. It's about as big of a fire as I normally make anyway. It's enough to keep you warm but in reality. Unless you're in extremely cold temperatures, like below 30 degrees. Um, or or severe. Extreme to me is uh, 
you know, 30 degrees to zero degrees. Severe is like, you will die. It's quite extreme to do something crazy, but it's severe. It's a severe capital punishment to die, right? Well, death weather is like below zero degrees. Um, 19 degrees if you don't know what you're doing. But that right there, guys, you see that? That's a sustained fire. We did that with simple stuff in our kit, and we didn't even touch the stuff that really kicks off a fire. We just simply used that little stupid puck over there and a, and a, and a flick of a big lighter, right? We could have easily decided to use our ferrocerium rod and use up our flash tender over there. We could have easily took one of our pre-made fire pucks that burns for two minutes and just skipped the coal-making method. We could have literally skipped this entire method right here of finding sticks off the ground and pulled out of our bag. But we didn't have to, right? That right there is a kit that'll save your life. Why? I just showed you how little bit of it can make you a good fire with a, with a small amount of knowledge, right? If you ever get into a situation where you can't use all that knowledge because you're freaking out, you've got that whole kit over there to fall down on. And just one section of it made us a good fire. Guys, I hope you enjoyed this video. I'm going to go ahead and let this guy burn down. It's kind of a warm day. I don't want to leave it out here. It's a bit dry. And uh, I really hope you learned something. I hope you understand the value of this. Anything you see here can be purchased on Amazon or from uh, Randy from Stitch Gear. I will have a run of five made of those uh, bags down there, and which I'll show you in a later video why they're so important. I'm going to go ahead and submerge one for a little bit, set it out in the rain. We'll talk about the values of it. But that tender bag right there, while it seems pricey up front, would have saved Sarah's life. Stay tuned for more, y'all.